In this tutorial, I will be walking through some of the general principles when it comes to internal threading. I will only be talking about making threads with a drill and a tap. There are other various methods to create internal threading. These alternate methods will be explained in future videos. To begin with, you have to choose a material. In this case, I have chosen mild steel. And to demonstrate a common scenario in a workshop, I have made myself a quick dimensioned drawing. What you can see from a drawing like this is that you need four drilled and tapped holes in four different sizes. The holes are placed along the middle of the material on one axis and dimensioned 20 millimeters apart on the other. The drawing also states that the tapped holes have four different sizes. The first one is an M12, the second one is M10, third M8, and lastly, the fourth one is M6. But what do these descriptions stand for? Let's take the M6. In the case of the M6 tapped hole, you will need to pre-drill with a five millimeter drill bit. And then you will follow up with this tap. Now get your hands on a set of calipers. Measure the outside of your tap. It should be around 6 millimeters in this case. As you might have noticed, all my measurements are in metric. This means that these thread dimensions are also metric. And the good thing about that is that metric threads are quite easy to understand. As you can see on the table to the right, we have a list of threads paired with a thread pitch and a pre-drilling hole size. Just to make everything a bit easier, I have timestamped the thread table so you can click back at any time. Now let's take the M6 thread as an example. On the table you saw that the M6 had a thread pitch of 1 millimeter and a pre-drilling hole of 5 millimeters. To simplify threading in general, you have to visualize the outer points as peaks and the low points as valleys. Whenever you see the M symbol paired with a number, you would always have to think of this number as the measurement between two peaks. Same goes for the diameter symbol. Whenever you see this paired with a number, you would always have to think of this number as the measurement from valley to valley. For the internal thread, the analogy is the same. When we look at a cross section, the outermost peak to the outermost peak will always be the thread dimension. And the distance between the innermost peaks is the pre-drilling dimension. Now you might ask, how does all of this even work? Now take it easy. Let's just start with the drilling. Some of you might still be slightly confused, but I will showcase drilling and tapping later in the video. Now let's stick with the basics. This here is a simple illustration of a drill. In the top, we usually have a tapered collar. This attaches to your drill press. Next up, you could either have a taper directly connected to your drill. This is usually the case for bigger drills. When you go below 13 millimeters, it's very usual to use a chuck. Chucks, just as the bigger drills, have a link between the taper and the chuck itself. To attach your drill, you just insert it into the jaws and then you tighten it. The drilling operation itself takes place at the very tip. Most metric drills are ground to a 60 degree point. When the drill is rotating at an appropriate speed and sufficient pressure is delivered through the drill press, then the leading edge will start to cut into the material. If your drill is sharp enough, you will start to see these curly chips forming from each of the flutes. Just a quick side note, if you want to drill with the exact rotational speed needed for mild steel, you just take the number 6996 and divide it by the diameter of your drill, let's say 20 millimeters. Then you will be left with 349.8 revolutions per minute. This can be quite hard to achieve on a drill press that only has three or nine gears, but you just have to choose the gear that is closest to or preferably slightly below. When you have drilled your pilot hole, it's time to insert the tap. In the case of the M6 bolt, each revolution of the tap 
results in an increase in depth of one millimeter, which matches the pitch of exactly one millimeter. Thus, two turns will result in two millimeters of depth increase. Before we move on to the tapping process, let's get this drilled. To know what sizes to drill with, I would either have to look in the table, or you can buy sets with matching taps and drills. In this case, I'll need the last four drills. Another little trick for achieving better threads is to slightly countersink your holes before starting. I have now completed the first step of the tapping process, which is drilling the hole. Now let's get on to what this video is actually about. I will only be showcasing you how to make threads by hand. It is possible to put your tabs in your drill press, but it can easily go out of control and lead to either injury or mechanical malfunctions. When you're tapping, you're actually cutting away material. And to make this process go more smoothly, you have to apply some grease. You can basically use whatever you want as long as it has lubricating properties. For the M6 tapped hole, I'll be using this winding iron that has a ratchet mechanism. It's very important to align your tap with the hole and just start turning. If you at any point feel the need to use excessive force, just reverse and back out about one turn and then go back to tapping. Now for the bigger taps, I'll be using this more simplistic winding iron. Just place your tap into the key slot and apply grease. This seems to have been a success. If you followed along, you should also be able to make these kind of quality threads. As you can see, it does have some wiggle, but this here is way more than enough for any hobbyist out there. If you like this video or found it helpful, remember to subscribe, like, and write any suggestions for other tutorials in the comments. That's it from me today. Bye bye guys.